What is up, Hedgers? The NFL playoffs is here, and I am excited. Oh, this is oh, the best time of the year. Wild card weekend. Now we got the extra games. So we got the Monday night game two. We got six games. Oh, let's just let's get into it. Um, I hope you watched last week's episode of The Hedge with Double D. The Hedge with Double D. Always forget to do that. Got to introduce the show, The Hedge with Double D. I get so excited that I forget about introducing myself. Um, as you can see, I'm riding solo this week. I wish everybody was with me because last week. Uh, when we did our playoff previews, I really hit everything. So I wish they were all here so I could brag about it. I mean, we did. <clears throat> got the Bills, got the Texans, got the Bucks, got the Packers, even got the Titans in there. So, I mean, literally everything. Oh, So it'd be nice to brag. But there's always next week to brag, right? So hopefully they'll be back next week. <laughs> but anyways, um, what matters now is this week. So... Got two games Saturday. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you're not just looking at me the whole time. You'll see the Browns are minus two here on DraftKings. They've been kind of bouncing around. I've seen minus two and a half. I've seen it drop to minus two. I've seen it go as far down to minus one and a half. So definitely some money on the Texans is coming in. Um. Colin can't be with us tonight, but he did text me a couple picks, and one of them that he liked was the Browns minus two and a half. So Colin's on that. Um, so they played earlier in the year. Uh, as you can start, as you can see here, the total is forty four and a half. Um, they played earlier in the year, and the Browns <coughs> kicked butt, but. Um, Stroud didn't play, so, I mean, you really can't take that game into <clears throat> account that much. Um, the Texans have been very inconsistent this year. They're really good sometimes. They've been poor sometimes. They can they can put up, like, 35 points. They can put up, like, you know, 17 points. Um, the Browns, obviously, you can't really look at their yearly stats because of all the quarterback changes throughout the year. you got to look at, really, since Flacco took over. Um and they've been a really good team since Flacco took over. Um, the run game is not very good, but Flacco has been, I mean, he's got over 300 yards a game. <laughs> the Flacco resurgence is, I mean, surprising, but it's, I mean, it's awesome. Um, cool to see. But he does throw a lot of interceptions, so that's something to think about. Um, he does throw, he turns the ball over, he throws interceptions. He also, you know, they get a lot of yards. Mari Cooper and, and Joku, he's, it feels like him and David Njoku have just like been playing forever all of a sudden. And they just, I mean, cause Njoku has been going crazy since Flacco took over, but, um, so that's, you know, that's the props you can look at. If you really, actually, my favorite prop is Flacco to throw an interception. Um, uh, it, it's at like minus 140, minus 145, uh, maybe minus 150 some places, but, so it's not the best, but I mean, I, I think he'll throw an interception, so maybe you can put that in a little same-game parlay action if you're going to do something like that. That can really boost you at minus 140. But I do, I think Flacco will throw an interception, which does make me, you know, when the turnover battle is so important in the playoffs, that makes me want to lean Texans, Texans at home. C.J. Stroud's playing really good. The Texans are playing really good. But, man, this is so hard to pick against the Browns here. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. But the, also, you know, the Browns are the Browns, and I could see them, their feel-good story, that they're all of a sudden they're good, but it wouldn't surprise me at all if they lost in the first round to the Texans. And, you know, just like later on, if we look at the Lions, it wouldn't surprise me if the, the feel-good story of the Lions if they lose too. Um, so, I mean, I'm looking at the over here. I think, the, I think it's going to go over. I think the Browns will score enough. I think the Texans will score enough. Um, no, but I just, I'm not really, I don't feel comfortable picking a team one way or the other. <clears throat> I really want to take the Texans though. So, I mean, if you made me pick, I'd take the Texans at the plus two and a half, maybe bump it up to plus three. <clears throat> but I like the over 44 and a half, really, honestly, more. Um, but like I said, my favorite pick, Flacco, uh, over 
0.5 interceptions. So Flacco to throw an interception is my favorite pick there. And I do like the Texans. If you can get them as an underdog, I mean, maybe take the money line. I mean, you you get them as a home underdog, so maybe take the money line, honestly. Um, wouldn't surprise me at all if the Texans win. And honestly, I'm kind of cheering for them. Um, that'd be CJ Stroud, the Texans. It's fun to watch. <clears throat> all right. Next game, Dolphins, Chiefs. Um, I'm much more set on a pick here, a little much more confident on my pick here. Um, what's all I mean? I'll just let you know. Taking the Chiefs, <laughs> Chiefs, as you can see here, minus four and a half. I've seen it bump to minus five. Um, uh, total is 43 and a half. I've seen it at 44. Um, here you can look here also. Here was I've been looking at this too on covers. Showing you some of the trends here and just where everyone looks. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Excuse me. The team's records here and against the spread. Um, something to think about with uh, the Browns and Texans here. I don't know. It's like against it says the Brown, the Browns are three and five on the road, so under 500, but you can't look at the full season with them because of all the quarterback changes. And the Texans are good at, you know, like it's, you can see here, they're six and three at home, but only four and five against the spread. So um, they've been favored more at home, obviously. But um, Brown's hotter than the Texans as of late. So just, you know, interesting to know all the stats here. But again, we're looking at Miami, Kansas City. I like Kansas City. Again, here, you can look at the road and the home stats, and they're kind of even. Kansas City, I mean, Miami slightly better on the road than Kansas City is at home. But Miami is very injured. <laughs> Miami has a lot of injuries. There's also going to be very cold. It's going to be like I've seen it at zero degrees. I've seen it as low as negative nine degrees. So it's going to be really cold. It's going to be in Kansas City. The cold weather doesn't always affect. If you look at just overall, cold weather doesn't always affect the overs and the unders, and it doesn't affect the um, the train, the warm weather or the dome team that comes in. It's about 500 either way. Um, but the Dolphins in particular, um, I think I heard it on the Mina Kimes show, are like 0 and 11 um, when it's under 40 degrees, only 40 degrees, so not even like freezing. But <clears throat> in their last 11 games. So, yeah, I mean, maybe Miami specifically is not used to it or something. I don't know. But <clears throat> that's something that, you know, that's a trend that it, you want to jump on. But also just Miami has so many injuries. All the injuries on defense. They had a couple more injuries last week. Van Ginkle went out and a couple other guys. They just like don't have the the pass rush right now. Um it just they've even got a couple guys questionable on offense. I'd imagine Waddle and Mostert still play, but I mean maybe they're not not a hundred percent, which they're gonna need. The Chiefs beat them already this year in Germany and I feel like the Dolphins are worse now than they were then and the Chiefs won 21-14 and now it's in Kansas City with the all the elements I mean you got to I feel like this just all screams Chiefs so you got to take Chiefs minus four and a half minus five whatever you end up getting it at <clears throat> if you get it minus four and a half I'm gonna bump it up I feel like the Chiefs are gonna win by a touchdown um so I mean minus five is really comfortable there. You know, see if they win by six. Um in terms of overs and unders, I still like the under, even though I told you the overs aren't really affected by the weather. You want to scream under, under because of all this. I mean, it's gonna be so cold, maybe even snowing. Um, but they're taking that into account with the weather and with the spread and everything. So but like I said, I still I'm leaning the under because the Chiefs, it's really the Chiefs. The Chiefs have been an under team a lot this year. Um, the Dolphins have struggled against good teams. The Chiefs aren't necessarily a, a great defense there, but they're good. Um, so the Dolphins struggling on offense, the Chiefs not scoring as much as people are used to them scoring. I like the under there. And I like I said, I like the Chiefs to cover the minus five. All right, moving on to Sunday. First game on Sunday, Steelers Bills. This one's this one's been tough to pick the uh, spread here. 
Uh, minus nine, minus nine and a half, depending on where you're looking. And then the over under is 34 for a total. <clears throat> this is also going to be a bad weather game. Um, the, it's supposed to be like in the 20s. It's supposed to be snowing and it's supposed to be very, very windy. So it might be tough to throw the ball downfield. It might be tough. You might see a missed field goal or two. You, you might see more fourth down conversions because they don't want to kick a field goal on like a fourth and five when <clears throat> maybe you miss that. Just, you know, goes toward the under, I guess. But again, they take that into account with a 34 total. So they're not expecting a lot of points. The Steelers are not going to have TJ Watt, which is going to be huge. Um, last year, the Bills and the Steelers played. When T.J. Watt was injured last year and he didn't play, and the Bills easily just carved him up, they destroyed him 38-3, to and it was in Buffalo. So, I mean, similar circumstances here. It's in Buffalo, no T.J. Watt. But, of course, the weather's going to be much different, so maybe you can take that into account. But all of this is screaming <laughs> the Bills to cover. Um, I really want to lean toward the Steelers just because Mike Tomlin um, – the Steelers in general, lucky is not the right word, though some people have will put luck as a stat in there. And the Steelers are winning close games. Um, the Bills have lost a lot of close games. You know, the Bills basically should have a better record. The Steelers should have a worse record is what they're kind of saying. The Bills are better than what it looks, and the Steelers are worse than what it looks. So I feel like the Bills should cover in that sense. Um, they should do better than their schedule or than their record says. So I'm taking the Bills. Taking the Bills minus nine, minus nine and a half. I think they'll win by two scores. Um, I don't think the Steelers score much at all. Um, with the snow like this, I don't see George Pickens breaking a big, long touchdown. Um, it's going to be down to running the ball, which, I mean, the Steelers have been doing better as of late. But the Bills have also been running the ball pretty well as of late. Or just all season. Um, Josh Allen... Obviously, he's going to be the X factor. If he can take off whenever, he'll get some big runs. He'll probably run a touchdown in. They love to run the ball with him when they're close to the end zone. Um, so him or James Cook to get a touchdown is probably a pretty good bet also. But I'm taking the Bills, minus nine. I'm going to stay away from the over-under because 34 is so low, it's hard to take the under there. But I do think... If you want to look at the Steelers, the total points maybe take the under there because I think the Steelers don't score much at all. But I could see the Bills putting up like, you know, uh, 27 points out of nowhere just because the Steelers can't stop and they get a couple big plays here and there. So I'm going to stay away from the total. All right. Who <laughs> next game, Packers, Cowboys. Oh, man. What a season for the Packers, obviously. If you haven't watched many of the shows, I'm a Packers fan. You can see, uh, very excited. The Packers are not supposed to make the playoffs at all this year, so it's been a great season. They're like the youngest team to make the playoffs in so many years. Um, the offense, especially, is just all like first, second year guys. It's 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 great. So it's kind of like playing with house money, nothing to lose. Um, Cowboys are favored by seven points. I get that. The Cowboys probably should win by a lot. And they might. Um, their offense is kind of built to beat the Packers. I could see them running the ball. I mean, luckily, McCarthy doesn't run the ball that much. So maybe McCarthy will make a mistake and keep throwing the ball. And we can do something there. But I I don't know. Um, unfortunately, Jair Alexander... I think they said he just rolled his ankle, but he hasn't practiced. He rolled his ankle Wednesday and hasn't practiced Thursday or t Friday today. Um, so that's concerning, obviously. Top cornerback. I'm sure he's going to play, but that's not good if he's hurt at all. Because um, basically stopping CeeDee Lamb is the Packers' big thing on defense. If they can stop him, they might have a chance to win. And then on offense, they're going to need to run the ball. They're going to need Aaron Jones to have a lot of yards, you know, maybe a little bit receiving, but he's going to need to run the ball. Um, looks like A.J. Dillon's out, so it's going to be all on Aaron Jones, which is fine with me. 
AJ Dillon has been kind of disappointing. And then Jordan Love, if he can just kind of stay confident, just kind of do his thing. He seems so cool and collected back there, throwing it off the back foot, just taking chances, and it's working a lot. So if that keeps working, I could see the Packers upsetting them. The Cowboys, you know, crazy stuff happens. But the smart bet here is the Cowboys. Taking it down to minus six is the smart bet. Just see if they win by a touchdown. Um. I mean, they they might. I could just see them. The Cowboys might put up thirty eight points. Um, and it's gonna be hard for the Packers to keep up with that, even though they've got a good offense. Um, so I also like the over because I think the Cowboys score a lot of points. I think the Packers will score enough points that they hit the over. But I mean, there could be you know a turnover. You know, it could be a crazy turnover. Aaron Jones could go off. And I could see the Packers winning on the last possession also. So that's what that's what I'm hoping. Obviously, I'm cheering for the Packers. But as I say all those things, it's I think it's pretty clear. I don't think the Packers will win. Um it's been such a good season. It doesn't matter. Um, but it'd be great to go in and upset the Cowboys. That'd be so great. Um and McCarthy, if it is a close game, if you want to do live betting, if it's a close game in the second half, if Maybe take the Packers then, because McCarthy is not good. I think, as most people know, close game, end of the game situations, clock management, all that stuff. Um, so if it is close in the second half, maybe take the Packers then live. Um, see if you can get a little live bonus bet action on either DraftKings or FanDuel. They always, I feel like they're always giving out live bet um, bonuses. So, but it, I'm taking the Cowboys. Minus six. I'm taking the over two, over 50 and a half. Um, I think a lot of points are scored. Um, and again, it's it, a lot of these injuries are interesting. So maybe wait till Sunday morning to officially take anything. Um, see how Jair, if he's what they're saying about him, what they're saying about Christian Watson, if he's going to play, he's still questionable. I feel like he's got to play if he sat out last, last week as questionable. Um, so hopefully Watson plays, and that'll be a big thing. Uh, sorry, a big thing. That's, that'll be a big boost to the offense there. Um, another touchdown threat there, especially another deep threat. Um, so yeah, watch the watch the uh, the injuries there. All right, uh, Sunday night, uh, Rams and Lions. Um, Colin sent me another text here. He likes the Rams money line. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. Colin also liked the under on the Dolphins Chiefs earlier. So jot that down for <laughs> if you're taking note there. Um, Colin likes the money line on the Rams. I don't know. I don't know if I like the money line. I might take it. I'm I'm interested in that. I kind of, I mean, the Rams are a popular upset pick here. They're at plus three. They're getting three points. And I'm taking the plus three on the Rams. So I'm taking them on the spread, not officially on the money line. Taking the Rams plus three, I could still see the Lions winning this. The Lions have a lot of advantages here, but I like the three points. Um, especially if, we, if it jumps up to three and a half, ever jump on that. Um, so there's the, oh, 51 and a half is the total here. So, um, See, and I'm I'm gonna stay away from that in general. And here here's why. <laughs> um, I think both teams are gonna score enough. I think they're gonna have not not gonna have trouble. It's not gonna be like a defensive battle. But I think the Lions might have some longer scoring drives running the ball. The Rams are not very good against the run. They're toward the they're bad against the run, and the Lions are very good running the ball. Um, you know, which leads for longer drives, obviously. And the Rams, they're going to try to run the ball, I'd imagine, but the Lions also have a very good run defense, and so the Rams are going to have to throw the ball because the Lions, basically, their strength is more in the run defense than the pass defense. So maybe look at Stafford to hit some yards there over. Look at Puka, make look at Cooper Cup. One of them's definitely going to hit their over. Maybe both hit their over. I like Cooper Cup to score any top, excuse me, anytime touchdown. Um Good prop bet there, Cooper Cup, anytime touchdown. And I like the Rams to cover. Um, again, the, the Lions have the advantage in the run game on offense and defense, but I think the Rams, I think Stafford's going to put it together. Uh, maybe Goff has a mistake here or there. Um, you know, if you get it, if you get a little bit of pressure on him, he becomes 
way just not near as good of a quarterback all the stats drop he becomes much you know he drops down to toward the bottom half of the league in terms of all the qbr stats so get pressure on him for the lot the rams and i could see that happening they still got aaron donald um and then for the lions you know uh khalif raymond's already i think he's ruled he's either doubtful or out so he's probably not going to play um either way Injured, got injured in last week's game. You know, people were talking about that. I was, I looked bad for Dan Campbell, honestly, playing those players, letting him get injured at the end. Um, but Sam Laporta got injured. Obviously, that's even bigger. The tight end, he's questionable. So look at that. If he doesn't play, that's going to be huge. And I'd imagine, you know, I don't know. I could see, I don't know. I don't think that's going to move the line at all, but either that could be big for the Lions. They could hurt them, it will hurt them. So again, I like the Rams plus three, staying away from the total just because I think I think both teams will score, but I could see some longer drives. And that's gonna I think it's gonna be very close to that 51 and a half. Um all right. Last game, Eagles Bucks. Uh <laughs> this one's also this one's tough to do early on since it's Monday night. There's some health, some injuries. So really, definitely wait. Don't put anything in until right before the game. Um, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown are both hurt. Um, Hurts, I mean, Hurts is definitely going to play, um, but he's apparently he's battling a little injury. A.J. Brown hasn't even practiced. I imagine he's still going to play, but not 100%. Baker Mayfield was obviously hurt last week. He was limping around. So I don't know. Maybe if we don't get a whole lot of information that these people, that these guys are uh, I don't know, closer to 100% or just feeling better. Um, it might be better to wait and watch a couple series and see how they're feeling before you put a little live bet in. Um, obviously, the Eagles are on a free fall completely. The Bucks, even though they won, they did not look good last week against a bad Panthers team. Uh, but, I mean, they, they won. It's like, like I said, this one's tough because neither team came into the postseason looking good. We got injured quarterbacks on both sides. We got an injured star receiver. Um, it makes me lean toward the Bucks for sure. Um, because the Eagles are just falling apart. Um, Baker Mayfield's probably going to be able to put it together and not be too injured, I'd imagine. If he is limping around, he looked bad last week, so maybe that's something to look at. But look, looking at it, it's the Eagles are um, minus three. They are still favored, even though they've been falling apart. But, you know, they were obviously, you know, they started the season off really hot. So they're still a very good team. But, I mean, looking at trends, they've been very bad lately. So it's I, there's no way I can take the Eagles minus three here. I'm I'm look, definitely looking at the Bucks plus three. Maybe even take the Bucks in the money line here, honestly. Um, I have no idea what the 43 and a half points in terms of the over-under. Um, probably leaning towards... I want to say on. I don't know, honestly. I want. I was gonna say under, but the Eagles' defense has been terrible, so I don't know. Um, again, this is all about the injuries. See how Baker's looking. See how Hurts is looking. If AJ Brown plays, um, but again, I'm I'm leaning towards the Bucks. Um, it's just hard to do this early. Um, and it's it's surprising me that I'm saying the Bucks is why I'm saying it like that. I guess because if you asked me this, you know, a couple of weeks ago, a month, month and a half, two months ago. It's like, oh, of course the Eagles are going to be favored. Of course the Eagles are going to beat the Bucks, whoever comes out of the NFC South. But the Bucks have looked like the better team lately. So, I mean, you got to ride that. They're at home. Um, so, let's go with the Bucks plus three. All right. All right. Well, that is what we got for this week. Um, oh, man, I can't wait for these games to go. So, Enjoy watching them this weekend. Have a good weekend. Bet responsibly. Good luck. I hope we hit all of these. I will see y'all next week.